Clinicians must always consider the abdomen of the critically ill patient as a source for concern. There are 11 indications for ultrasound of the abdomen, as indicated by the American Institute of Ultrasound Medicine. They are abdominal, flank, or back pain, signs and symptoms of jaundice, palpable masses, abnormal lab values, follow-up of known pathology, metastatic disease search, evaluation of congenital abnormalities, abdominal trauma, pre- and post-transplant evaluation, guidance of invasive procedures, and the search for free fluid. Today's objective is to become familiar with the anatomy, how to hold the probe in the proper position, and what normal is supposed to look like. At the conclusion of this introduction, you will be grouped and assigned to different stations where the bulk of your learning will occur. What you do with today's knowledge will dictate your future skill set. Learn from each other. Learn from the sonographers and the radiologist. Read their reports and go back and find things on your own. Page 10 of your book depicts the three most common transducer types. They are the linear array, the curved array, and the phased array. Selecting the right transducer is very much similar to how an artist selects his or her brush to create the best image. Let me explain. The ultrasound beam is sinusoidal with a peak and trough. The faster the frequency, the less tissue penetration. Conversely, the slower the frequency, the better the penetration. Ultrasound of the abdomen is done with low frequency probes, somewhere in the range of 2 to 5 megahertz. This allows for better penetration of the deeper structures. Both the curved array and phased array have frequency in the 2 to 5 megahertz range, whereas the linear array has frequency in the 5 to 14 megahertz range. The first view I want to introduce you to is the right upper quadrant. You will learn proper probe positioning at your individual stations. With the probe in the anterior axillary line with the indicator pointing cephalad, you should acquire the following image. Be able to identify the liver and the right kidney. If you had fluid in Morrison's pouch, it would look like this. Remember, Morrison's pouch is a potential space and it is the most sensitive view to detect free fluid in the upper abdomen. To find the gallbladder, place the probe to the right of the siphoid process with the marker facing cephalad. It should look like this. Notice the increased brightness. This is called acoustic enhancement. Turning the probe 90 degrees with the marker now pointing to the patient's right will give you the following image. In the longitudinal view, find the following view. It is called the exclamation mark because the gallbladder and the portal vein make up what appears to be an exclamation point. This is a helpful landmark to find the gallbladder in relation to the portal vein. In between the gallbladder and the portal vein is the MLF, or the medial lobar fissure. It is an important landmark because it helps us inspect the neck of the gallbladder for stones. In the transverse view, from the gallbladder neck, you will find the portal triad, which consists of the portal vein, common bile duct, and the hepatic artery. It looks like the Mickey Mouse face. Colored Doppler can help differentiate the common bile duct from the blood vessels. Remember, normal common bile duct size is less than 7 millimeters.
Gallstones have a characteristic hyperechoic or bright appearance with its accompanying acoustic shadowing. It is very important to identify the acoustic shadowing because of several gallstone mimickers that exist. When evaluating for acute cholecystitis, look for the following. Is there any distension of the gallbladder that is greater than 10 centimeters in length? Does the gallbladder have a thickened wall greater than 3 millimeters? And does it look like an onion skin appearance? Is there fluid in the gallbladder wall? Can you identify pericholecystic fluid? Having the presence of any of these secondary findings improve your diagnostic positive predictive value from 92% to 95%. When evaluating the left upper quadrant, in particular the interface between the spleen and the kidney, place the probe with the indicator pointing cephalide. When evaluating this view, remember knuckles to the stretcher, which implies that this view is more posterior than you think and your knuckles should be touching the stretcher. It is important to identify the spleen when doing procedures to prevent inadvertent injury. The ultrasound anatomy of the kidney consists of an outer cortex and an inner medulla. The medulla is bright because of the presence of fat. The transverse view looks like a horseshoe with the renal vein originating from the center. To evaluate the urinary bladder, place a transducer above the suprapubic bone in a transverse plane with the marker pointing toward the patient's right. Tilt the transducer inferiorly into the pelvis and fan it superiorly to image the entire bladder. Identify the rectum, the prostate, and the uterus. Rotate the transducer 90 degrees with the transducer pointing cephalid. Sweep the transducer from left to right to image the entire bladder.